Greetings and welcome. I am Gary Liker, the pastor of the Christ in Stanton United Methodist Churches. It is a blessing to spend this time with you as we worship our Lord together. Our first scripture reading this day comes to us from the Psalms. It is Psalm 100, and it says this, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Our second scripture reading comes to us from Ecclesiastes. It is Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 13, and this passage is pretty well known. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet, they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you for this time with you this day. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. Continue to grant us your grace and your peace. Open our hearts, open our ears to hear the message that you have for us this day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So, greetings to you all once again. My, my sermon title for today is The Time That Changed Us All. As we are coming upon the end of one year and the beginning of a new year, uh, I found that the reading from Ecclesiastes was in the lectionary, and even though we aren't done with the Christmas season yet, I simply couldn't let this go by without putting today's readings to use, especially in reference to this unforgettable year, 2020. I'm going to start out by saying that time is fickle. We know the phrase, you never know what tomorrow will bring. Well, that's very true in our lives, even in the church. Over my years in ministry, I have decided that there should always be a clock in the sanctuary that at least the person behind the pulpit ought to know what time it is. In many places around the world, though, congregations 
quite honestly don't care what time it is. In China, for example, worship services go on for hours. People travel long distances to get to church, and many of them have started out even before the sun has come up. After their long journey, people want a robust, lengthy sermon. And anything less than you know a sermon that lasts at least a, an hour and a half, well, people feel cheated. Can you imagine a sermon that long? Having said that, this is not the way it works in many Protestant churches in America. Time is fickle. Time depends on a person's perspective. There's a story about a, a preacher who was highly regarded for always finishing his services right at noon. One Sunday, the impossible happened. He preached until 1230. On the way out, one of the church folks angrily asked him, what happened to you? The preacher answered, well, for years, I have always put a candy mint in my mouth as the service started. I would tuck it away in my cheek. It was always gone at exactly noon. That way, I never had to look at the clock or worry about what time it was. But this Sunday, it didn't go away. And I finally realized that I had put a button in my mouth. <laughs> time is a fickle thing. We constantly have to keep track of time. There are deadlines to meet, papers to be turned in, buses or trains or planes to catch, schoolwork to get done. Calendars and clocks, especially on our phones, they have become our masters in modern day society. Now, it, it's true, much has been gained in terms of production and organization when it comes to time and clocks and calendars. But when life gets divided and subdivided into seconds, minutes, and hours, you know, many things are lost. Our distance from the natural rhythms of life keep increasing, and we are often off, we're also often distant from the understanding that each day, each moment is a gift from God. As a new year is soon upon us, I think it's time to maybe rethink time. So there was an ancient teacher of wisdom whose name, uh, translated in Greek, was Ecclesiastes. This wise person understood time quite differently from the way it is understood today. Today's reading lists various seasons of life arranged in sharp contrast with one another, and yet they all are undeniable parts of human existence. His list rings so true. Now, I could easily go on to explain all these seasons of life and how time relates to them all. However, I'd rather use our reading today to address the elephant in the room, if you will, that has disrupted our lives and certainly most of our time that has been the year 2020. Let's think back. Remember January and February of 2020? It seemed normal, right? Things were humming along day by day, week by week, no major issues that I can remember, right? But we heard whispers about this virus in China, coronavirus, COVID-19. But you know, we were okay. It was in China, it wasn't in the Asian countries. But then, all of a sudden, it was spreading like wildfire all across the world. And yes, it finally reached the Americas. It was all around us, and we, like everyone else in all the world, we were scared. March came, and the United States, the world, really, came to a screeching halt. Everything that wasn't deemed necessary was shut down. We did not want to catch or spread this dreaded disease, and rightfully so. This time that had come upon us literally changed us all. 
I want to take a moment now to recognize all those who have suffered from this dreaded disease, and especially those whose lives were taken by this disease directly or from complications of the virus. Our prayers, our love, go out to all individuals and families who have been affected, perhaps are still being affected, those who are being affected today by this horrible virus. So our world changed. Time changed. In many ways, time stood still. We hunkered down. People started working from home or in different ways at work. Some were laid off from work. Some businesses were shut down completely, never to be opened again. Some people found new creative ways to continue with their work in general. Families needed to be careful with traveling and visiting other family members. The virus was out there. People were getting sick and passing it on to others. And yes, it is still happening. Schools were closed. Businesses were closed. Churches were closed, just to name a few examples. We as a church needed to try and figure out how to be church while our doors had to remain locked. It was a very new, different, and trying time. Online ministry was the new wave. It still is. Some churches jumped on it right away while it took time for other churches to come on board. Now, yes. I will acknowledge the fact that some churches have remained open through the entire COVID-19 pandemic. Some continue to ask why we United Methodist Churches in our Minnesota conference specifically are fully closed again while other churches are open in our state, in our communities. Well, we are simply trying to be careful and cautious. The virus is still around us. We'd hate to have more outbreaks in our churches, and we have had outbreaks in our United Methodist churches. Because of this, we are trying to be proactive instead of reactive. Are we happy about that? No. Would we rather be open? Absolutely. However, for now, we are being careful. Now, hopefully, as the virus cases continue to decline and as the vaccines are made more available, we will be able to open back up and get back to normal. But yes, it's hard to be patient in the middle of all that's happening all around us. So time was disrupted like we have never experienced before. What do we do? How do we do it? And how do we look at things in new and different ways? We have certainly been overwhelmed by a change in how we see time and how this has changed our lives. First, I would say that we need to look at Psalm 100. Psalm 100 tells us to praise our Lord, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Our Lord has been with us. He has walked with us. He has carried us through this whole ordeal. Thank you, precious Lord, for being with us through this pandemic. Thank you for giving us your strength. Thank you for your steadfast love through it all. We continue to lean on the everlasting arms of our Lord as we move forward. 
Next, we acknowledge what was said in Ecclesiastes. There are times in our lives where we will experience good times and bad. It is the rhythm of life. But here again, it is the grace, the glory, and the love of our Lord that helps us through all those times, including all we've been through during this pandemic. Finally, as hard as it may be, as we are continuing to deal with everything that has been going on around us, we are asked to continue to love our Lord with all of our hearts, our minds, our souls, and to continue to love our neighbors as ourselves and even our enemies. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. This is the time, now is the time, in our society more than ever, not to answer evil with evil or ugliness with ugliness. This is the time for the love of God to be shared with all those around us, through you and me. When Jesus began his ministry in Galilee, he said this, the time is fulfilled. When we hear those words today, another now is created. What does that mean? Well, it means that this very moment, this now that is newly created in our lives and in our world, is rich with divine possibility. We are on the frontier between the old year and the new year, and Jesus continues to reign. In the 20th century, Karl Barth called his age the time of great positive possibility. My friends, that is even more true right now. January 2021 is filled to overflowing with great divine possibility. The past is not completely finished and gone, but new and wonderful possibilities are certainly upon us. So, my friends, as this tumultuous year comes to an end and a new year filled with new and wonderful possibilities will soon be upon us, hear these words. For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Yesterday is but a memory and tomorrow is but a vision. But today, well-lived, makes every yesterday a memory of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Let us pray. Gracious and holy Lord, we thank you for walking with us through this past year. It has been unforgettable. Lord, as we are, are ready to... Um, to say goodbye to 2020. We ask that you be with us and open our hearts to all of the divine possibilities that the year 2021 has for us, that you have for us. Oh Lord, as we enter into a new year, may we be filled with hope and joy, with your gracious love. And may 2021 be a wonderful year with each other, and especially with you, precious Lord. Oh Lord, all of this we lift up to you, our precious Lord and Savior. Amen. Blessings to you all, and Happy New Year. Amen.